Hello there, it's Austin, and today we're going to be brewing the oldest style Pilsner, the Czech Pilsner. So let's get started. We'll start by collecting our water through a portable reverse osmosis system. This gives us a clean slate to build our water profile on, which is important because, as most loggers are, Czech Pilsners are a more delicate style. Once we've gathered our 4.8 gallons of water, or 5 if you're into rounding up, we'll start the preheat process. I'm preheating to my mash temperature of 149 degrees, and then while we're waiting for our cold ground water to heat up, it's time to add in some water additions. We're looking for dry, but maybe not quite as dry as a German Pilsner. For the malts, we're using 95% Pilsner malt and 5% acidulated malt, which is a simple malt bill and a classic way to bring our pH down in our mash. With everything ground together, it's time to add our grains to our kettle and let it mash for 60 minutes. I stir once every 15 minutes or so, and that usually gives me an efficiency of around 70%. At the conclusion of our 60 minute mash, it's time to pull the grains out and set the kettle to boil. While it's preheating, I'll pull some of the wort off the bottom of the kettle and rinse it back through the top. This does slow down the process of bringing our full volume to boil, but it does help in getting our efficiency up to that 70%. Once we've dropped in some foam inhibitor, it's time to start our boil process. If you talk to an experienced brewer, they might tell you with a 95% Pilsner malt bill, it's a good idea to boil for 90 minutes to drive off any DMS off flavors. Um, I'm just going to boil for 60 minutes here because I don't know any experienced brewers. While all the traditional brewers are busy typing a comment about our boil length, we'll add 0.29 ounces of Magnum hops for our bittering additions, and then it's time for a much more traditional 30 minute, 20 minute, and 0 minute edition of Saz hops to get us that Czech spicy that everybody's looking for. With the boil concluded, it's time to hook up the chilling system and forget to clamp it off so that I spray water everywhere before hooking it up correctly and bringing the wort down to a temperature around 58 or 59 degrees Fahrenheit or at least as close as we can get with our groundwater. Leaving the tubing attached, it's time to transfer to the fermenter. I'm fermenting in a conical 7.5 gallon SS Brutech. Mine has cooling coils installed in the lid with extensions for our smaller batch size. The yeast I'm using today is Imperial's L28 Urkel strain. This is my first time using this strain, and honestly it's excellent, but most stuff Imperial makes is. With everything agitated, like my dog on the 4th of July, it's time to get out of the way and let the yeast do its thing for a couple days. I leave mine at 58 degrees or so for 10 days before ramping it up to about 65 degrees, and then finally cold crashing it down for a couple days. I use a glycol system to keep my beer at temperature, but you can use a fermentation chamber or throw it in a cave. That seemed to work pretty well for a few hundred years. Finally, at the end of the fermentation schedule, it's time to keg up the final product connect it to our CO2 tank. Make sure to use the in port, that helps. Then your 5.3% Czech Pilsner is ready to enjoy. So when I say Czech Pilsner is an old style, it is an old style, but when we're looking at the timeline of beer history, it's still relatively in the modern section over here. But in the 1840s, when lagers started to rise in popularity and mass production started to kick up a little bit, Pilsners were Czech Pilsners. And to me, this beer tastes like that beer history, which maybe might not be something you order at a bar, but it's something I really like. It's easy to drink. It's dry, not quite as dry as a German Pilsner, I would say, but it has a little bit of hop spiciness that I'm getting out of the Saz hops. Nothing quite as far as clove or anything like that. It really cleared up and it's highly carbonated. Overall, I really like this beer and it's exactly the style of beer that I like to keep on tap all the time. Cheers. Cheers.